this video we're going to be creating the module system for our tutorial client. We're going to be creating a toggle sprint, a simple fly, and putting this uh, watermark or HUD into a separate module. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Um, let's go ahead and make a new directory inside of tutorial named module. Then we're just going to make a new Java class named module, a new Java an interface named module info and then a new java class named module manager right let me close all these that i don't need there we go so let's go ahead and just start with module this will implement subscriber from the alpine event system let's go ahead and make this a getter and public abstract class and now we're going to define everything we need our module to provide so private final string name and description private final category cat oh we, oh we also need to make a category so category enum let's just do something like um pl no combat movement player render and that should be good we can you can add more if you'd like category category uh, private boolean enabled by default and private boolean toggled oh this one should be final um, this toggle one is gonna switch when we toggle but some modules since we don't have a click UI yet they'll probably be in they'll probably be in the next uh, one or two tutorials uh, where we will actually have a click UI uh, so let's go ahead and just make some variables so protected final minecraft mc equals tutorial dot instance dot get in mc and protected final font render fr equals tutorial dot instance dot get fr now we're going to make a constructor so public module module info info equals get class dot get annotation module info dot class uh, let's go ahead and make this module info before we continue in that constructor so this is a really easy class we're just going to add at target element type dot no element type oh element type dot type and oh why what did I do? Oh, we have to make this an at interface. And then at retention, retention policy dot runtime, and string name, string description, default empty string, category, category, oh, category and boolean enable this is the enabled by default so default is false uh, we can overwrite that if we need so now let's go ahead and finish up this constructor here by let's validate it first by validate dot not null info confused annotation exception and then this dot name equals info dot name this dot description equals info dot description this dot category equals info dot category and this dot enabled by default equals info dot enabled okay so we're, now we're gonna say if enabled by default we're gonna call toggle there we go why oh oops oh what did I do there we go and then so public void toggle public void toggle which will uh, just set enabled not toggled which we'll make that right now public void set enabled boolean state if this dot toggled equals equals state return and this dot toggled equals state if state else so now let's actually register the event listener so that we can use those inside of our module so if state tutorial dot bus dot subscribe this let's copy this down and just say unsubscribe we're gonna make all the 
event methods in just a second. Uh, let's, let's also call here on enable and on disable. Oh, oh no, 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 don't run. Which we'll make those again right now. We'll just make some helper methods that we can override in the module. So public void, no, not toggle. Public void on enable. Uh, we don't need anything in those. Public void on disable. Public void on update. And public void on key, int key. There we go. And now let's actually register the listeners like I said we would do. So we can actually probably go to tutorial. Let's just copy this one. Okay, so yeah, let's do event key. Let's remove this message here and just say if this or if toggled, then all we're gonna do is press is say on key e dot get key, and we're gonna copy this um, for the other ones. So on two D and for the on update. So event update and event 2d event 2d listener and event update listener so event update or on update and on 2d e dot get sr okay um and final thing for this class we have to now register those so tutorial dot bus dot subscribe event update listener copy that down event 2d listener and event key listener and one more thing just copy these and unsubscribe from them okay this um okay this can be a bit confusing so i'm going to try to go through everything so here we're just setting the uh actual parameters for the module the name description category this is pretty simple um, this module right here is just setting those from the module info that we have that we will call in the modules. Um, and toggling is just setting it enabled and subscribing to the event listeners, which um, are actually calling the events just like we did in the tutorial main class last time out. Uh, and here are just things that we will overwrite in our modules. This will probably make a lot more sense once we are actually creating modules. But first thing, right before that, we have to create our module manager so that we can actually, um, so that we can get the modules by their classes and to register them. So let's go ahead and do that real quick and then we'll get right into um, making an actual module. So we're gonna say at getter, um, private final hash map class, uh, question mark extends module comma module modules oh I messed that up uh oh there's not me oh okay that's fine uh public module manager this not modules equals new hash map and we'll just call it register which we'll make in just a second uh oh yeah so for the module manager I'm gonna be adding reflection so that we don't have to manually add modules here when we make them. It'll just kind of automatically add them. So let's go ahead and make the register method here. So public void register final reflections, uh, which was included in the pom.xml in the first lecture. REFL equals new reflections, which we're going to say what we have right here. So for me, it's just tutorial dot module which is this class right here dot impl let's go ahead and make that package here's where we're going to ha actually have all of our modules inside the impl class we don't want anything but modules inside of this implementations uh, package right here just make sure because everything is going to error out and it's going to be bad if you do so final set class question mark or uh class ambiguous extends module classes equal refl.get subtypes of 
module.class because all of the modules are going to extend module. So we're just getting everything that it does. For class extends module. Uh, C for class, I guess. Cla out of classes, try final module module equals c dot new instance modules dot put c in module then we're gonna uh not accept catch instance oh instantiation exception or illegal access exception uh e and let's just do nothing there all right uh now let's unregister too so public void unregister module modules or you know to get all the modules or module mod out of module modules dot remove mod to get class all right now let's actually make some methods so we can get the modules out of this hash map um which will be pretty simple uh then we can get actually making modules so public module get module class extends module module return modules get module and then public module get module string name so just overloading it for module module out of modules dot val oh values Uh, if module dot get name dot equals ignore case name return module otherwise it's just return null oh forgot a semicolon and one more method to get all of the modules public module array uh, get modules out of the category so category category return get modules uh, dot values dot stream dot filter um you could probably just do module get oh module like get category equals equals category dot to array uh module array new should work hope so all right now in our main class i'm just gonna say private module manager module manager then module manager equals new module manager there now i believe everything is done and we can start making our first uh, module i'm just going to be making a toggle sprint first so let's just name it oh we should probably make a category of player and we'll then make a sprint class which extends our custom module class and let's add the at module info annotation name sprints description automatically presses the sprint key for you and then just category oh no category equals category dot move no play we should probably put this movement actually uh how do i rename this refactor rename movement all right so now um most tutorials i've seen just kind of make a lot of if conditions because some uh toggle sprints can be detected by some anti-cheats but the one i'm going to show you really can never be detected so let's just do on update and then mc dot game settings dot keybind sprint dot set oh dot set pressed uh, true. We have to actually go into the keybind sprint here. Let's search for is or pressed. Let's okay. Let's look for this. Um. Let's go into key binding. Right here. Let's add at setter. There we go. Okay. So now we have a toggle sprint. And if we run the client, uh, we should have a toggle sprint. Did we? Oh, 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 oh. Actually, let's stop this. 
we don't have a click UI yet, so we need to set the default. We need to default it to be enabled. Otherwise, it won't work. All right, so now we should see. Yep, yeah, we automatically have a toggle sprint. Um, I'm not pressing the run run key. I'm just pressing W, as you can see. Um, let's let's remove um, message. We don't need that anymore. All right. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be moving our um, HUD here into its own separate module. So new package. Uh, did I name it Visual or Render? Let's see. I named it Render. Okay, that's fine. So new package Render. Let's just move this out of the movement package. Um, there we go. So movements or render. Okay. So now let's create HUD extends module at module info name equals HUD. Uh, let's not even add a description category dot render enabled equals true. And then on 2d, you can just remove that. And then let's just copy this, remove that and paste it in. There we go. So now we will have a HUD. And one last module I'm going to do is I'm going to add a flight. Now this flight is going to be super, super simple. I promise to expand on it um, in the next lecture because this one just is going to be terrible. But I'm just making this to show you that everything works. So flight, description, uh, vroom vroom, category equals category.movement, enabled equals true. And all right, so now we can just do on update and let's make it on disable. If MC dot the player does not equal null, we'll say um, MC dot the player dot capabilities dot is flying equals true. Uh, if MC dot game settings dot key bind jump dot is pressed, we will just say MC dot the player dot motion y plus equals uh two if mc dot game settings dot keybind sneak dot is pressed mc dot the player dot motion y minus equals zero dot two and finally um if mc dot game settings dot keybind forward dot is pressed mc dot the player dot fly or dot capabilities dot f set fly speed 0 0.25 this might seem slow but trust me it's going to be really fast and then oh i already put it on, on disable we will just say mc dot the player dot capabilities dot is flying equals false and there we go so this flight should work uh please note i would never you ever use this flight in a client it's really bad We'll probably be expanding on it um, in the next module or two, but just just bear with me for now, please. Um, all of these modules. Oh, Sprint. I would feel comfortable using a Sprint in a real client because um, you literally cannot get banned for it. Um, the HUD will completely redo it too. But yeah, let's just go ahead and load it up and see if it works. All right, so we can see our tutorial client up there. And oh yeah, actually that is really way too fast. But as you can see, our flight is working. We don't have a no fall yet. So if we just kind of go to the floor or not the floor, but the ground, we just die immediately. Um, but again, this is a very, very simple flight tutorial. Um, but I think that wraps it up for this episode. And the next one, I'll be probably, we might work on a GUI. Or, well, yeah, we'll probably look, uh, work on the click GUI. That's going to be a really, that's probably going to be a really long and advanced one, uh, but it's a needed one. Obviously, you don't want to have a client without a click GUI. And probably in the next lecture after that, we will be expanding on our modules. Thank you for watching. Uh, again, I really cannot emphasize this enough to just not use this in a real client. We will be fixing this, I promise, um, probably in the next two lectures. Uh, that's probably going to wrap it up for this tutorial. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll be posting another one very soon.